Hi everyone and welcome to this short video series on partial differential equations. Right? Until now we have learned quite a bit about ordinary differential equations and how to solve them analytically in the linear case. Um, we have learned a little bit about stability, also how to solve them numerically. And this sequence is about PDEs or partial differential equations. Right? And before we dive in also into the numerics, um, I would like to take this first introductory video to tell you a little bit about what's even behind these equations, why they are so interesting, and also why they are very hard to, to work with. Um, so here is two examples of ODEs or ordinary differential equations. And the specific characteristic of ODEs is that we have a single independent variable, right? In the context of dynamical systems, this is usually time t. Doesn't have to be time t, can be any variable, but usually we are using time as the independent variable. Right? And so if you think about these two examples, you have this pendulum that we have already seen. This is, you know, swinging back and forth. We have uh, the angle theta. Um, as a function of time. So the system state is described by um, the angle, which is a function of time, and the angular velocity, which is also a function of time. So only one, um, one independent variable. And the same is for different mechanic systems, right? If you think about vehicles, for instance, and you define your vehicle as one, let's say, bulk of mass centered at some place, then what you're interested in maybe is the position of this vehicle, which you define as a single point, um, the center of the vehicle's position, um, and maybe it's velocity. So again, we have the situation, independent variables only time. And now let's consider a few other examples where we are in the world of PDEs, or partial differential equations. And so the key difference is that the state now The state depends on time and space. And space S. Okay, so again, partial differential equation, the, the, the more mathematical intuition would be we have more than one independent variable could be two spatial variables and so on. But since this is a lecture series about dynamical systems, I'm going to use this as my definition, let's say. We don't have one independent variable time, but we have additional independent variables space. Again, formally, it's just you have more than one independent variable. But for this purpose, this is what we're going to, to, to use. So let me draw two small pictures. I hope you can recognize what I'm drawing here. Uh, say this is the house you live in maybe, okay? Hopefully it has a window, maybe more than one, but let's, let's stay with one for now. And let's say we are in the, in the summer sunny situation, you have warmth or sun rays hitting the roof. And then maybe also if you're talking about winter, maybe you have a heater that radiates heat um, if you turn it on, okay, on colder days. So we have a system and what we are interested in is maybe the room temperature. Okay, so let's call this the temperature T. And obviously, the temperature in this description in my room does not only depend on time T here, right? It's also important where I measure the temperature, right? So in near the, the radiator or my, my heating device, the temperature is likely higher than maybe near to the window where cold air may come in, right? And on the other day, next day, maybe different sun conditions or I, maybe you know, the, the outside temperature is different. Uh, the temperature distribution may also be different, so it also depends on time. So the temperature T is now a function of the position S as well as time T. Okay, so you now position might be maybe two dimensional in this example. Well, it's very hard to read, I guess, but you get the idea. Left, uh, right, and up, down. But this is the idea, okay? So the temperature is not so easily described by just x of t because, well, the temperature can be described everywhere. And so this is not the single example. We have many, many more examples. Um, consider this poor attempt at drawing an aircraft where we have this wing made now. And so this is the second wing. 
Okay, so we're flying left and we're not interested in the aircraft itself. This may be described maybe by position and velocity, but we are uh, the interested in aerodynamics, right? So you have fluid entering or, you know, attempting the aircraft and you have a distribution of the air and it's going over the wing, maybe it's going below the wing. So if you're interested in this type of situation in the velocity of the fluid around the aircraft or the air pressure, which is really important to know, determine whether the aircraft will lift or, or, or go down, you have the air velocity V, which is different in places and also in the time. So velocity as a function of space and time. And also the air pressure P can be a function of space and time. Okay, so you see here two very prominent examples. We have these and we can um, talk a little bit more about other examples later on, but you see already, you know, we have space and time dependency, which makes this a little bit more complicated because what we need to study besides the time interval is a region of interest. or what we call the domain, okay? Here for time dependent, we always said time is on the interval, maybe T0 to T end, okay? So simply enough. Now we have to define something else or something similar for the position. So what we usually say is we have a domain, which we denote by omega, right? So in my heating example, this is my living room, or in this aircraft example, this would be the air surrounding the, v, uh, the, the, the aircraft. And what's also very important and different is we have a boundary. Which we call usually gamma, right? So obviously it's very important if the temperature outside is hot, right? So the walls are maybe warmer or if we're in the winter and it's cold, so the temperature is very obviously influenced by the boundary conditions. And so this is how PDEs work and this is why they are more complicated. So this is essentially all I wanted to say. Two things I'm going to add now is I'm going to make a short list of the key differences, which I have touched already a little bit. And then I will start with a very simple example, which we explore in much more detail in the next video. So what are the key differences? And I guess you, you can already guess because we have discussed a few of them already. So the key differences are, first of all, my right-hand side, right? We are going to discuss this in a little bit more detail, but in, for ODEs we had x dot of t is f of x of t, right? So the right-hand side is just a function of the state itself. Here on my right hand side, and I'm going to abbreviate this with RHS, the right hand side, which is here the F, um, contains partial derivatives with respect to space. All right, so what we have is partial derivative of x with respect to s, second order derivative, and so on. Right? So key difference, the right hand side, we will see that you can phrase it sort of as an ODE, but the right hand side has these partial derivatives. It's not only derivatives with respect to time. Then the second thing is boundary conditions. Right? I, I, sorry, I discussed this already. But this is really, really important, the boundary conditions. This is something we do not have in, in ODEs. We, here we have an initial condition and we need this two here, but we in addition have this boundary condition. And then the third thing, which is a little bit more intricate, but it's, which is very, very important because this makes PDEs more expensive and harder to solve. At every point in time, right, let's say the space is free now, but the time is fixed. So this is the temperature distribution in my entire room for a fixed time t, this is infinite dimensional. Okay, so here we had the system, the safe space is two dimensional. 
here it is two dimensional. And maybe you can define an ODE which has a hundred dimensions. In molecular dynamics, for instance, you can go up to thousands and so on, no problem. Still, it's finite. Here, at every point in time, the state is still a function of space. So the temperature can be defined everywhere, so at infinitely many points, which makes it more complicated. And so to conclude, let's introduce a very simple example, but I'm not going to derive anything, I'm just going to state it, um, which is heat transport. And this is the example we are going to consider in the next video as well. So let's consider, and this is a very simple example, we are going to consider a, a rod. Let's say this is a very thin and long piece of metal maybe. And the only variable we are interested in, so position-wise, is the vertical direction. And so this rod has a domain, right? So what are we interested in? It's the interval from 0 to L, so it's a rod of length L. But this is an open interval now. Why? Because we have boundary conditions, gamma 1, let's call it, is the temperature on the left-hand side. And we have a second boundary condition, gamma 2, on the right-hand side, right? So this is um, the 0, which is excluded in the interior, and this is the L, the stated position L, which is also excluded from the interior. And what you have then is sort of this, again, an initial value problem. We have the heat equation, and we will see where it comes from. So dt, partial derivative of the temperature with respect to time, is defined by a heat transfer coefficient, so metal has a quicker transfer than wood, for instance, times the second derivative of the temperature in space. Okay, and so we will see, this is what I said here, point one, the right-hand side depends on uh, partial derivatives. And we will see how this comes into play later on. What's now important is the temperature at specific points in space at time zero is defined as some T0 of S. So we have an initial temperature distribution. And we also have these boundary conditions. So we say T of zero at arbitrary time is some sort of T, let's call it left of T, and T at position L and time in a similar manner. Okay, so this was a, let's say, rather superficial introduction into PDEs, not deep mathematics, but just to give you an idea what are the really the, the main differences. And I hope this gives you a good idea why this is relevant, right? We have many, many systems like heat transport, aerodynamics. We have systems in biology or chemistry, which can be modeled by partial differential equations. So many, many physics effects are very, very um, intricately uh, well, connected to partial differential equations. We have also in finance PDEs and so on. So it's a very important model. And if you think about climate modeling, for instance, from data, which is something that's very, very interesting and, and highly active at the moment, then we need to know a little bit about PDEs, even though in the end we will use data to learn how these systems behave, maybe without having the model. But still, some knowledge, I guess, is in order. And this was the starting point. In the next videos, we are now going to study a little bit you know, how do we find such a heat equation, and then also a little bit how do we solve them numerically. Thank you.